Today we're doing part three of the Honda CBR buggy. Dune buggy. Not really sure what to call this thing yet. I have no idea. Right now I'm just calling it the buggy. So uh, I actually just finished uh, filming part two. Cleaned it up in here a little bit and now I'm starting part three. So if you guys saw part two, you guys would know that I decided to go a different route with the whole rear suspension. I bought a bunch more heim joints to redo it properly and I'm waiting for those to get here. So while we're waiting on that, Let's now focus on the front suspension. So before we figure out, you know, exactly where the front suspension needs to go lengthwise, we need to first focus on finishing the bottom frame and figuring out how much leg room I need. And uh, then we can figure out where the high joints need to be for the front suspension. Then we can focus on the whole top part of the frame, how all that's going to go and how the roll cage is going to go. We just installed the this this part, just more of the frame, and this. This is the beginnings of the front of the go kart or the doom, but whatever this thing is. So, you guys are probably wondering why I'm using a pipe bender to bend tubing. This is inch and a quarter tubing, and basically, when I bought this, I didn't realize that I only have a pipe bender. I, once I realized that, I was really hoping that it was going to be able to bend it. I quickly found out that no, it can't bend it. The most it can do is this, which I had to bend this in two different spots, which I kind of like the look of that, but I definitely don't want to do this with the whole part of the frame. So when I found out that I need a tubing bender, which was over two weeks ago, I bought one and I kind of bought a cheap one. I found one on eBay. It's a manual pipe bender, but it had good reviews. It was really, you know, not cheap and uh, it had, it looked good. So I bought it, bought it two weeks ago. It said that the, you know, eBay said like, oh, estimated shipping is going to be one to two weeks, standard stuff. And it's been two weeks now and I'm wondering, you know, where is this thing? So I looked on eBay and now it's saying, oh, estimated delivery of five weeks from today. So I'm like, what happened? So I contacted the company and said what happened it said you know one to two weeks now it's saying seven weeks from the day I bought it so what uh, and basically they said like oh something happened they had to make something from scratch or manufacture and so I don't know what happened but basically they said like oh hopefully it's gonna ship early of next week so 
kind of unfortunate because I need this thing to continue with the frame, but I guess we can now start on figuring out how to add front brakes to this whole thing because I really want to add front brakes. I've read the comments of part one of this thing and I agree with you guys, this thing really needs front brakes. So I guess in the meantime, we can focus on that and figure out can we even add front brakes and how to do that cheap and not having to buy a bunch of stuff. So let's now focus on doing that.
Okay, so I know I said in the, in the beginning of this video that we were going to more focus on the A arms for this, and we instead focus on figuring out how to add front brakes to this whole assembly. I kind of had to do this first because I have to build the spindles before I can build the A arms to get the spacing in between the tires correct. Now, with the front brakes, this is what I came up with. This is basically just copying normal brake rotors that you'd find on a truck or a car. This is What this does is this just kind of bolts in between the hub and the tire. Obviously, this is the brake disc, and, you know, the caliper goes here. You guys get the idea. So, um, I really hope they work. They took me six days to make two of these things, so I really hope they work. Uh, the calipers I'm using, they're actually off of a uh, the front end on a motorcycle. They're double barrel calipers, so I'm hoping they have enough stopping power to stop this massive thing. But um, we can't find out unless we just test it. So uh, anyway, now we also got started on building the front spindles. This is obviously just you know where the hub attaches to. The heim joints are going to attach here and here, and this thing's going to turn with the tire and so on and so forth. Now I gotta end this video here, unfortunately, just because those took me a really long time to make and I'm kind of behind on where I wanted to be with filming versus uploading on these videos. I wanted to be today work, working on at least in the middle of part four, not ending part three and starting part four. So I'm, I'm kind of behind on, where, you know, because I'm trying to upload uh, two videos a week now with this project, I need to be at a certain level, at a certain point with each video versus editing and finishing and uploading and stuff like that. So I'm running behind on this one just because those took forever. So I got to end this video here. I'll be putting links in the description below to where you guys can find all the parts I've been using for this project as with every video. Um, anyway, so I got to end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So before I end this video, let me, uh, let me say something real quick. Now, I know I said in the last video that I found something online that I want to add to this project. It needs to go in between the engine and the gearbox. Some of you guessed what it is. Some of you guessed correctly. Some of you guessed that it's a turbo. It's not a turbo. It is a forward and reverse gearbox. Now, unfortunately, when I said that in that video, the next day I tried to buy it, and the guy that makes it and the guy that sells it, he's not making them anymore. He doesn't have any more that he's that he's selling and he's in the middle of moving shops and he's not going to be able to make these things within a couple months. I can't wait a couple months to get this thing to add it because hopefully I'll be I'll have this thing done by then. So I've been trying to find other types of gearboxes that will work. Basically the gearbox that I found is it's a tiny little you know eight inch wide tall it's it's tiny it has a sprocket input and sprocket output on the same side. It would be perfect for my setup because I already have sprocket sprocket drive. Um, it would it would have been perfect for my setup, but unfortunately I just can't buy him right now. He's not making him anymore and all that kind of stuff. So the reason I'm saying this is because I'm looking for something like that. If you guys know of any type of gearbox that can withstand 82 horsepower that has a sprocket input and sprocket output, or at least I can modify it to have a sprocket input and sprocket output. If you guys know of any gearbox like that, please let me know. I need to add forward reverse. It would be awesome. A bonus would be high-low, but not necessary. I more need just, just forward and reverse for this thing. So again, if you guys know of any type of gearbox, any Polaris Trailblazer, I know I've been looking at Polaris Trailblazer gearboxes. Unfortunately, the bigger gearboxes, the ones that are more for like a thousand cc engine, they're a CTV input and a CV axle output. So that really wouldn't work for my setup because uh, I already have CVs and I already have chain drive and all that kind of stuff. It really wouldn't work. I could try and modify it. I really would rather not, but um. If you guys know of something like that that will work for my setup, please let me know so I can hopefully add reverse to this project. Hopefully I can get it soon so I can focus on the engine and getting this thing running sooner. Because I really want to finish this thing soon and, you know, get this thing on the road. And I'd really rather not wait a couple months to get the gearbox and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, again, if you guys know of anything, please let me know. 
But for now, I gotta end this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next one.